Council so Studies Committee of the whole meeting, October 25th, 2022, at 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. Could I have a motion, please, to approve the agenda? And I'm assuming no late items. Okay. Thank you, Councillor King, Councillor Rhodes, all in favor. Thank you. And um, the adoption of some minutes, the committee of the whole minutes of September the 27th. We have a motion for that. Thank you, Councillor Bennett, Councillor Rhodes, all in favor. Thank you. And we will go on to um, staff reports today. And our first staff report is from Community Services, and that would be Director Davis. Thank, Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council. Uh, this is our third quarterly report uh, for this period for July 1st to September 30th of this year. In terms of administration, our fall leisure guide was developed in-house. Hard copies were ready for distri distribution by September 1. The South Okanagan Aquatic Center feasibility study was presented to Council, received for information, the Accessibility and Age Friendly Committee met on the first Thursday of every month. Project schedule was updated and a number of items were rescheduled to be completed in the fall, notably the scent garden on Pioneer Walkway and the accessible pathway at Kinsman Park. I have just started discussions with the Lake Osoya Sailing Club as their lease expires in December of 2023. We held our annual pass September 12th to the 20th. Uh, during this time, we sold 227 memberships, um, and at that time, we have a 25% reduction in our memberships. Registration for fall programs starts September 21st, and we were excited to be holding new programs such as Junior Musical Theatre. Those programs are full running with an increase in registration from this time last year. From September 21st to the 26th, we collected over $6,000 for program registrations online and an additional $2,676 of program registrations in person. And three memorial benches were purchased uh, during the third quarter. In terms of programs and special events, we offered a total of 52 programs during fall registration, nine of which were canceled uh, due to low registration. Some of those uh, were adults, uh, learn to mountain bike, uh, pickleball, uh, intro to camera, and just a couple of children programs. Uh, we held a successful uh, Tykes camp as a preschool camp, uh, which includes crafts activities uh, uh, for kids three to five years of age. We had a total of 203 enrollments in September alone, 105 which were done online. Uh, we had great turnout at our annual family splash on Wednesday, August the 17th. Kudos and thanks to the Swedish Rotary and Rooster Mafia Foods. Huge thank you to Rihanna Harfman, summer camp coordinator, and the rest of the camp crew. We ran a total of eight weeks of day camp with an average of 42 kids registered each week. Approximately 1,242 hours were worked at the Sonora Community Center by groups or individuals. Uh, during this time, that includes special events, nonprofit organizations, and of course, interior health. Pickleball leads a drop in schedule with 22 hours of schedule time per week at the Sonora Community Center, just in case the pickleball players uh, are asking for more. We finished our second session of swimming lessons on August the 12th, and that was uh, done by waterways from Penticton. The Sun Bowl Arena Ice was extremely busy this summer. We booked from 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. for camps and schools and groups. So Okanagan Minor Harpy started conditioning camp in early September, and the Coyotes had their main camp on the September 2nd to the 4th weekend. The Terry Fox Run was held on September 18th. Over 50 people participated, and $7,000 was raised for the foundation. In terms of facilities, the opening of the arena was delayed to a pneumonia leak in the chiller. Uh, the repairs were completed and staff implemented strict safety protocols during this time, and it did open on July 24th. New signage was placed at the marina to let the public know that it is private moorage, as we've had some issues with other people parking overnight. We made a transition to fall winter ice bookings. Uh, the Swedish Coyotes had two home exhibitions with over 150 people in attendance each night. And the first home game was scheduled for October the 1st. And they have a very strong team this year and they're doing extremely well. 
We work with straw refrigeration design to review various options and how to improve the plant room and the chiller issue. Moving to a plate and frame chiller will assist with heat recovery and ultimately energy savings. Interior Health continue to utilize the Sonora Community Center with increased clinic hours. A new signage was installed at the Sun Bowl Arena. Substantial completion for the RV site upgrades were completed at Desert Park. And we're still working with our insurance adjuster to complete the repairs on the dressing rooms at the Sonora Community Center. And this was due to a water leak earlier in the year. In summary, the third quarter of 2022 was eventful. As we get further from the pandemic, we are steadily increasing in our programs, events, and in-person meetings. The Sumble Arena hosts a number of camps and regular users, even with their delaying opening. Kudos to our staff. We're always working with the public and volunteers to make our facilities, special events, and programs exceptional. We would like to thank the community residents who have taken part with council appointed committees and hope that in the near future they continue to be involved. I would also like to thank Council for their community involvement and direction. And that's very much for Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. The uh, Council, does anybody have any, any questions? I'd just like to say, I know it's not part of the third quarter, but uh, for this week, um, uh, Director Davis and staff at the Sonora have been very cooperative in helping us put on the water science forum. And I know that some of the programs there had to be canceled due to the gym being used, but we do have a lot of people that have signed up for this forum. Um, so thank you very much to you and your staff for working with us. Thank you. Anybody have any anything else to add? Okay, do we have to accept the report? No, we're okay. We can just go on to the next one. That would be corporate services. Um, hey. Please, Mrs. Hilton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so there were three bylaws adopted in the third quarter. The Fortune Lake Zoning Amendment Bylaw, the Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1085-136, and Travel and Expense Appeal Bylaw. There was one uh, virtual and in-person public hearing held for zoning amendment bylaw 1085-143. There were five policies uh, adopted in the first, oh, pardon me, the third quarter. The deputy corporate officer and the corporate services admin clerk prepared briefing binders for the members of council and the CAO who attended the 2022 UBCM held in Whistler in September. Uh, also on uh, page of my report, there is a breakdown of the number of interactions bylaw had with the public uh, in the third quarter. Uh, some of the main projects that bylaw worked on in the third quarter were uh, they were pretty busy dealing with complaints of short term rentals, <laughs> and they've been sending letters to alleged property owners who have violated the town zoning bylaw. They were quite busy dealing with uh, park issues. Uh, animal control with unlicensed dogs and dogs at large. There were five freedom of information requests received in the third quarter. This is up from two as there were three in the second quarter. There was one job posting posted for the senior water and water operator. And uh, congratulations and best wishes to Tom Snook who officially retired in August of 2022. Uh, the Capital Project Meadow Finch is probably 75% complete. Uh, staff will be getting to uh, finish, finalize the project um, once the new council orientation uh, with the new council. Uh, there were zero insurance claims received in the third quarter. No land issues or leases and agreements to update council on. Uh, the corporate services team was quite busy preparing uh, for the 2022 general local elections in the third period, third quarter. Uh, nomination documents and statutory advertisements were prepared. Uh, a pre-election candidate information session was held on August 29th with approximately 15 people in attendance. Uh, on September 9th, uh, the chief election officer declared two people as candidates for mayor, seven people for candidates for council, and two people as candidates for water council. council. On September 12th, 12th, one of the candidates for the office of councillor received their nomination. And on September 20th, the chief election officer declared pursuant to section 98 of the local government act that uh, Robert Appleby and Claude Moreira were elected by acclamation to the positions of water councillors. And 
Also on that date, there was a declaration of an election by the building. Uh, reception, uh, there's a breakdown of the type of interactions that our corporate services and then clerk has with members of the public. So there's in-person phone, and they are also responsible for the town's uh, info at a city's email. Uh, and she was quite busy in the third quarter receiving MPI disputes and uh, processing uh, municipal tickets that the vital officers had wrote in the third quarter, most of those coming from the boat trailer parking lot. Uh, there's no updates for records met in the third quarter, no updates for transit in the third quarter, and victim services manager and worker attended a virtual session on resilience training. Uh, so in summary, the corporate services department uh, consists of the director of corporate services, the deputy corporate officer, our corporate services admin support, and our two law enforcement officers, as well as our relief. So a lot of our department's third quarter time has been spent preparing for the upcoming uh, general local election, which has been which was held on October 15th. The fourth quarter staff will be busy. Uh, with the 2020 local election and uh, everything that comes with that, and working with council orientation. The vital officers are going to be working on setting their priorities for 2023, creating operating procedures, and looking at public education programs. So at this point, I would just like to thank uh, our corporate services team for a great third quarter. And on behalf of our corporate services team, it's been a pleasure working with this council, and uh, we'll miss you all. You won't miss all of us. No, no. Here's the thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hilton. Does, um, does anybody go ahead? Call I think I'm lost there. I'm getting inside the premise. The first line it says concerned. Can you just kind of tell me what that means? That would be like the number of like, like inquiries that they met and then they would go and look and determine whether that property was unsightly or. If by by their definition it wasn't in sight. So then it would go down to one or the other lines if it was an issue? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Well, thank you, um, Mrs. Hilton, for um, you and your staff dealing with all of these things. I know it's been it's certainly been a busy time. Um, and Mrs. Hilton and um, Mrs. Robinson are now downstairs. And they have moved the mayor's office upstairs. I just like to point that out. <laughs> My exercise running up and down the stairs now. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, if there's nothing else, I will move on to um, Director Zackle and financial services. Thank you, Mayor Cordon. So attached is the income and expenditure <laughs> statement to September 30th um, for the town of Osuyas. We have projected surpluses at a general fund of 889000 $525, our sewer fund of $30,000, and our water fund of $20,000. The Sun Bowl Arena with the attached income and expenditure statement to September 30th also has a projected surplus of $6,045. Under bylaws, permissive tax exemption bylaw 1380 received first three readings in September. FOI request, two FOI requests were processed from July to September, and there's one in process, and these are all from the same um, individual. Tax sale properties, all delinquent property taxes were collected prior to the tax sale date of September 26, and there was no tax sale in 2022. There are a total of 29 properties currently in arrear status um, for a total amount of $95,172. The finance department will be following up with these property owners and register charge holders of these properties in the new year if the taxes remain unpaid and transferred from arrears to delinquent. Arrears are accounts receivable. We had 110 invoices issued in, from July 1st to 30th, 45 accounts with balances outstanding, totaling $218,270, $107,700 are current, and $110,547 are 30 and 60 days. Accounts payable, 2,285 invoices processed uh, for a total of suppliers of 393. Under cemetery, we had nine plot sales, Four were columbarium and five were cremain. We had 24 internments and 17 memorial installations. Under cash receipts, uh, we had 1,354 payments that were processed for a total of 5,236,000. Under property taxes, so we've got zero properties in delinquent and subject to tax sale. 
for a balance of zero dollars. 58 properties in arrears uh, for a total balance of 9,500 or $95,172. <laughs> 310 properties with a current balance of $340,542. 504 properties are set up under the pre authorized payment plan. And 668 properties with prepayment balances on their accounts for a total of $525,140. For utility billing, we've got 11 properties with outstanding rural sewer for a total balance of $3,969. 64 properties uh, with outstanding rural water. Uh, with a total balance of $64,525. Five properties are set up under the pre authorized payment plan. For our utility buildings, any of those rural properties that don't have their user fees paid by the end of the year, or I believe it's January 10th of 2023, um, we transfer those utility fees to the server of taxes. And at that time, it would go under property taxes and we would recover our money. And that's my report. Um, could I ask you to just go back about to the property taxes, 668 properties with yeah. prepayment balances on their accounts. Right. Can you explain how that works and how those people, does something happen next year that they have a reduction in the amount? Or can you explain that? that that's you? correct. So basically, the 668 properties have already started to pay their 2023 taxes. So they all have a credit balance on their account. So we've got 525,000 that is showing as a credit um, against those property tax accounts. Uh, these property owners benefit by receiving interest on their money. Um, I believe it's 1.75%. Uh, it's prescribed the interest rates prescribed from the province um, and it gets applied against that. So yes, it will reduce the impact of how much they'll have to pay. In 2023. So right now, do they normally pay X number of hundred dollars a month, and does that <clears throat> fluctuate them depending on how much they put aside? Or um, so the ones that are under pre-authorized payment plan, mm -hmm. they've got a set amount that's being deducted um, for 10, 10 months. Mm -hmm. um, so those ones are all consistent. You've got a number of other property owners that are still setting up their own pre-authorized payment. Um, to pay pay towards their property tax account, okay. and those those differentiate. And they're done through their banks. Then? They're done through their banks. Uh, they do they can do e transfers. They they can do all those things through the office. Um, it's been it's been welcoming to see the them doing that because made it much easier for them. Thank you very much. I knew some of that, but I didn't know all of it. So thank you. Anybody else have any um, specific questions? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Thanks. I'm your accounts receivable. When they're standing 30, 60 days, how long do we let them go before we? Uh... Um, out of all of the property or the account receivable accounts, um, I believe 98% of them will be collected. Um, a lot of them, like one of them here on that 30, 60 days outstanding was a World Fire Protection District. And that was a sixty-seven thousand dollar bill. So it looks like it's a lot and a lot outstanding, but um, they, they'll be collected. So if they do go to ninety days, is there actually a process we do? Um, yeah, we follow up letters, phone calls, um, get a little stronger with them to collect. Um, at this point in time, I don't have anything that mm -hmm. means recommended to go to collections or anything more. Happy council to write off. Thank you. Okay, and there are several um, papers in their um, statements. Yeah, so the financial statements are attached um, if council had any questions with respect to them. Right. Does anyone have any questions about the financial statements? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Dackel. Appreciate um, your report. And now we will turn it over to, uh, to Chief Courtmeyer for the Fire Department's third quarter. Thank you, Mayor, through you to the Rep Council. You have my um, third quarter report from July 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2022 as presented. I'm wondering if uh, Mayor and Council have any questions in relation to the reports provided. Well, there's the other question. False alarms. Do they get like one or two strikes against them and then do you get a ticket or anything? Or? Um, 
through you, Mayor, to uh, Councillor King. Yeah, as you see, the they're up a little bit. Um, we have, I think, 11 in the Asoyes mm -hmm. uh, town proper and about another 11 in the rural area. So um, mm -hmm. a total of 22. Nine times out of 10, they come from um, seasonal dwellings where people may or may not be at home where the alarm is activated and the monitoring company is um, notifying us. And in those cases, we can't actually verify that anything's going on other than just, you know, monitoring to see if there's smoke or fire. The other cases, if they are repeating, then what we do is under our bylaw, we will send them fines um, in relation to numerous uh, false alarms. But all these false alarms, you actually send a body out to that property? <clears throat> if there's a false alarm with the restore, we do not send um, anyone except the duty officer. Um, and that would be dependent on if dispatch has follow-up information relating to person is at the residence um, and burnt lasagna. And we will not attend just because it's uh, it's a it's a waste of resources. Are you using the training facility a lot more than in the past? Sorry, the training facility. You're getting better use out of it. Training the building. The building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think that the number of um, these notice in here, the training, the number of topics and the number of training hours completed is is uh, certainly an improvement. And um, and uh, thank you to you and the two deputy chiefs for making sure that that uh, people are attending those. And obviously, um, they're doing well on it. So um, so right now we have three streams. We have our senior officers that need the team leader um, mentoring to be able to guide our ladies and gentlemen into you know precarious or dangerous situations. And then we have our 1001 firefighters that have to refine and hone their skills. And then we have our probationary or new recruits that have to learn how to put the wet stuff on the red stuff safely. So um, between myself, um, Deputy Chief Hadama and Deputy Chief McCaskill, we are taking that opportunity to push everyone together going forward, learning as much as we can for the, the time that we have them. So is the training hours up or down from last year, or do you ever compare it? Like who? Training hours have been static. Um, it was clunky during COVID, so yeah. we were using cohort groups. Now it's um, uh, because we didn't suspend training like other departments did across the province and across Canada. We continued, but with smaller groups. Um, the complexities are we're still working with a volunteer base that uh, volunteer their time as they see fit and complexities of life um hockey schedules for one and uh running um children all over the place uh, this time of year sometimes that can uh, chew into the available people that we have out on, on those nights or those weekends to take that training um can i just ask have you had um a fair number of new recruits do you get that on a steady basis or do you have to um Hold it at a certain number in order to accommodate everybody. Um, just what's the status of that? Our ideal number, I believe, Mayor, is um, around 35. We're at 32 right now. Okay. The last five that we brought in, they are one course away from their channel one, and that took them a year and three months and two weeks to actually get that completed. So that's quite quickly okay. when you think of the, the, um, the, the volume of uh, knowledge and input that they have to be jammed in. So uh, we brought on another six and like paid on call service, uh, we lost five. So the average, the law of averages is for every five that you bring in, in five years, you have three. Okay. So um, it's a lot of work to ask for um, the volunteers to undertake. However, it's um, it matches the level of service and the work safe requirement is such that if we're asking them to do this, they shall be trained and know the hazards. So it's uh, uh, so far we've been blessed. We have uh, a number of uh, dedicated and committed people. Great, no, can see that. 
I had counselor Bennett. Yeah, and I just want to mention I you I say your deputy chief Ryan McCaskill has uh completed 20 years of service. So there's a good example of congratulations of long-term service. Yes. Uh, most of that was volunteer. And um yeah, we We've still been waiting for one more firefighter and um, to actually um, receive the medal um, federally. It's been a long struggle for us to try to buy that out of um, uh, the processes of Ottawa just because of COVID and I think it, you know struggles of supply chains. But uh, um, Mayor and Council will be made aware of a uh, uh, you know, forty-year service pin that will be presented this year so um, that's really exciting that's terrific so how many people do you have in the department that have say more than 20 years of service um we probably have six that are over 20. that's terrific and one that's over 40. yes, yes. so it's yeah. <laughs> Well, obviously, it's uh, if they enjoy being there and helping and volunteering. So that's a credit to the whole department. So thank you very much. Um, lastly, I just would like to, I um, will thunder stolen with um, Deputy Chief Brian McCaskill in this exemplary services medal, um, but also with um, uh, another um, firefighter, firefighter Blake Laura finished his 1001 and actually got a certificate too, which is if you if you imagine the amount of undertaking that has to go through that process, it's uh, it's it's good. So in those cases, we bring him and his family um, to the fire hall, and we do a, a presentation and a photo opportunity because it's not um, only the firefighter that is getting presented that certificate; it is the family because of the enormous sacrifice that they're going through when, um, in this case, Mr. Firefighter Lord is uh, away and studying and, and doing the courses needed to be a certified NFPA firefighter level one and two. So it's, um, it's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sticker that uh, they give you that's valid for life that nobody can ever take away. So not only that, but it defines their service, uh, ensuring that we're still uh, working towards our fire department um, master plan, which is, um, we're going to have a, a review with uh, uh, here coming up in a couple of months. So good. Well, congratulations to to Blake as well as uh, as Ryan. So Blake grew up here, so that you know he went to school here. His parents lived here, so that's um, that's nice to see that uh, that tradition followed. Good. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, so if I may, Mayor, I'd yeah, like to uh, thank you mm -hmm. all um, through yourself to the rest of the council for um, serving your constituents. And uh, um, I know that uh, uh, it's a it's a long duration. It's uh, I appreciate the service to the community. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to um, operational services, Mr. Director Brownstein. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, third quarter report on uh, July and September 2022. Uh, I'll start with our utilities department. Um, some major activities in the third quarter with the rest of our cleaning. Uh, we have successfully cleaned three of our four sites. Uh, the fourth site will probably be done in the spring of 2023. Uh, ongoing aesthetic to match with water, water system flushing. Uh, installation of the safety room at 402 will assist to facilitate earth more cleaning. Uh, installation of chlorine analyzers at the main wastewater pump station to provide continual chlorine residual information. So, this is again trying to make sure that our systems are operating as determined. Sanitary sewer. Uh, we completed some CCTV camera inspection of our collection in the city of road improvements. So, there's a, a selection of road improvements that were approved for design as part of the 2022 capital program. Uh, we uh, made sure that we inspected the underground infrastructure as well as the above ground. And found that there were some deficiencies with some of our sewer mains that will have to be repaired in conjunction with the uh, the road work. And we continue to do our wastewater pump station cleaning. Uh, this is where we go in and actually take uh, the combination truck and or some water and clean out all the debris and fog and greases and other materials built up in our pump stations uh, uh, due to use. Stormwater, uh, we did some catch basin cleaning on John and Gold. Uh, this was preventative maintenance. Um, just to ensure that they were flowing for any rain events that we may get. And uh, upgrade to the chlorine alarm system at irrigation station eight. Uh, this is a response to an audit by which they can see. 
Uh, public works, um, again, it's weekly sweeping, pothole repairs, daily mowing, daily line trimming, uh, daily watering, daily irrigation and hand watering, daily pruning. Um, cemetery, we had uh, some full burials. We had some cre uh, cremation interns. Uh, we had some irrigation repairs out in the left end of the cemetery. Um, that was due to a, a valve failure. We actually had to, unfortunately, had to just about all week and ended up causing some damage to the area. And the airport was, was swept uh, once in the quarter. Capital program. Um, police have stated that we've moved forward with 75% of our 54 capital projects by the end of 20. End of third quarter 2022. Um, majority are you know 80 to 90 percent complete, um, which is nice from my perspective. I think some of the stuff done. In regards to the project list, um, I'm just going to go over the ones that we've actually completed. Um, so the office yard security upgrade is now complete. The scale and scale house is now complete. Um, East sector review is complete. Uh, Bayside or Bayview Basewater Pump Station is now complete. Uh, so East Lake Crossing, so that was the water main crossing uh, that we just recently did uh, went under under Bun Bridge. That's now complete. Uh, East Sector Review and the Sanitary Sanitary Sewer is complete. Um, the water metering plan, which is now complete. And the water service replacements on Quail and 92nd are now complete. General operations, um, third quarter has seen a little bit of a, a relief in regards to service requests. Uh, we're, we're down a bit uh, from the second quarter. Uh, we have seen an uptake, as, as you are fully aware, in regards to water quality issues for the third quarter, um, as well as we've seen a drop in BC more health. Um, that's indicative of a slowdown in the uh, development world. Um, here's a brief overview of the type of services requests we get. Uh, majority are BC one call and water related service requests. Um, any questions of council? Yeah. Okay, Councillor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The walkers at Legion Beach, uh, when are they scheduled to open? Uh, they should be substantially by the end of this week. Uh, we will then look at opening them probably, I want to say, spring 2023. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to be open year round. It will be. I just want to make sure that everything is ready to go, everything's working prior to me saying that they will be open. Okay. Thank you. So I drove by there this morning, and, um, and the pathway is being worked on today. I obviously I understand that there was um, a lack of um, expertise and workers and so on to get that done. So I'm glad to see that they're continuing with that because. My concern was the the ropes and the you know things that been there all summer. So are they putting up a railing now along the pathway? So there will be a railing going up along the pathway adjacent to the uh, the washroom. There won't be railing the entire length. Right. Under the area is steep. There will be a railing to help people navigate the, the slope. Okay. Um and then is is the is the coating been put on the no, you no. that is actually in the budget for 2023. Okay. Um, so it you're assuming that things will, uh, Councillor King asked, uh, be pretty well completed by the end of this. Week. I've been assured by the contractor that it will be completed by the end of this week. And all of the bits and pieces will be removed. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for that. That's taken a long time, but um, uh, it'll be nice to have that operational and some of the grass that was there green by next year. <laughs> um, and I have one more thing. The down by um, the bridge, uh, just on this side of it on our on our park there has some been some digging going on. Can you explain how what that yes your worship that is the the so you slate water main crossing and we had a, a failure of a, a flange connection um, as a result of as a result of construction, that piece of pipe is still under warranty from the contractor. The contractor came in and made the necessary repairs. We are still waiting on parts. Uh, I believe that will be completed by the end of the week. We then need to do pressure testing, bacteriological testing to bring it back online. So probably within the next few weeks, everything will be restored. So it's still operational? Or no, the testing to the main is actually turned off. It does not adversely affect our operating requirements for our water system. Good. Thank you. That was my concern. Anybody else have any other questions um, of um, Director Brownstein? 
Okay, well, go ahead. Is there any more groundwater showing up, or we kind of flushed it through? Mm -hmm. We have not seen the concerns raised in the public. Uh, we get the occasional call now, um, not what we're getting over the, the lake fall. Um, with a couple of our sources now not running as much due to demand, we'll start to see the groundwater concerns drop off. Um, should we not get a, a major flow event in the system? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I was thinking about that too. Anything else from Director Brownstein? Well, thank you very much. I do know that we get lots of compliments on um, our parks and our flowers and our streets all year from visitors and from locals. So that's uh, a big thank you to your department. Thank you very much for, um, for keeping our town cheerful and bright and clean and people love it. So thank, thank you, you very much. Pass it on your keys. Please do. <laughs> Um, and next, we have our planning and development um, department, Ms. McKay. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff, and of course, through the chair. Um, very busy again this quarter from July 1st to the end of September. As you are well aware, we're responsible for land use planning, uh, food trucks, OTP minimum zoning, permitting, um, collection of securities related to developments. And so, um, Yes, in this quarter, um, we you'll recall that we released the request for proposals for the zoning bylaw update and the four chart bylaw update and the short term rental consulting services. And that was released in August. We have a selected um, um, consulting firm for that, and the contract will be released at the end of the month. Um, you'll recall that council approved the new policy for the ALR um, applications, and just um, heads up. Three applications are already in the works coming forward to council. Um, with respect to the boundary expansion, we call council passed a resolution um, amending the, the area that's going to be um, proposed for inclusion within the town boundaries. And that information has been forwarded to the province. They anticipate not getting back to us probably until end of November on that. So um, the RMI Resort Municipality Initiative strategy was completed by the department staff with input from other members of our um, management team. And um, the um, strategy along with the carry forward funding information has been set, sent to the province and accepted by the province. With respect to the developments at the airport, they've um, completed works completed to date, include uh, the runway expansion, new fencing, and the next step is the installation of the tie downs. Uh, for the scooter pilot project, you recall that we, we were accepted into the provincial program. So staff is busy now uh, preparing um, updates to the relevant bylaws like our traffic bylaw, et cetera. So staff also uh, formed some information gathering for FOIs that we received. Um, for the BC Entrepreneurial um, Program, we've been requested that we would consider going back to the program. So it's something we'll uh, look for council direction in 2023. Already getting phone inquiries about 2023 for food trucks. 13 new business licenses were issued this quarter. So that's that's encouraging. And of course, that requires coordination with Interior Health, the fire department, and other departments as necessary. Um, processing for development permits, the development variance permit. We have a rezoning proposal in, in progress. And then I've provided for you a summary of our res residential development projects. Um, that are currently in the works. And um, so you may have seen Meadow Art. Uh, all the permits have been issued for the villas over here at Zapia uh, Pond. All the building permits have been issued. So they're hard at work over there. And um, about every couple of weeks, we get a, um, a, a request for a final inspection um, for one of the four boxes. So there's people moving in over there. Uh, Meadow Art Phase 2 is busy, they're well underway. Phase three has issued um, their um, soil removal permit. So you see a lot of activity in that area too. And um, you're fully aware of what else is going on with respect to the list. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free. Um, and then with respect to building permits, inside permits, et cetera, of course, we've been super busy in that department. Emails, phone calls, and in person requests for information and asking where building inspectors. Um, we don't have one yet, um, but we have four or five we currently use now. So hats off to Claudia Lens for coordinating 
um, the RDOS building inspectors. There's two level threes that we utilize for inspections. Uh, we're also have Neil um, doing some work for us, Neil Fabbit and Wade Bliss, of course. And um, now we're farming out some of our permits to the city of Penticton for radio. So that's a lot of coordination. Um, uh, the list of uh, permits issued in this quarter is, is in the report. Um, 36 inspections year to date um, this year. Um, a stop work order was issued. And I um, guess that pretty much sums it up, although I would like to say it's been a pleasure to work with Councillor Harvey and Councillor Rhodes, and now I miss you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I ask about the 862889? Sure. The apartment um, has, where are we in that? Because I think there's a lot of people that are hoping that that will move forward quickly. Thank you, Mayor. For us, the plans for the five townhomes that front on the King, um, Kingfisher mm -hmm. are currently being reviewed. And their soil permit's been issued. They'll be um, preparing for the construction of the retaining structure, which will separate the two lots. Um, they're just in the, we're in the process now of collecting the fees for the um, uh, upgrades to servicing and the roadworks for both Kingfisher and 89. And then the building permit for um, 682089 will probably be issued in January. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm just I'm concerned about the number of workers that we have in town, and I certainly know that over on uh, Peanut Pond that there's a lot of workers over there, and you can see that every time you drive by uh, the progress that's being made. Mm -hmm. Do some of those uh, people also will they move to another site and help with that building? Sure. Or? That's a very good question, Mayor McCord. The people working on the, the villas will be moving to 8,000 Cottonwood. Okay. So that, and that will take them a while to finish what they're doing there. That's and, and, correct. Yeah. They've started to do works on 8,000 Cottonwood. Now they start to do the soil works and they're going to start um, servicing installations. Okay. Okay. Well, um, you know, about 515, um, you know, starts down here. So um, that's what we've seen for a while. So we're happy to see those um, go ahead safely uh, with water and sewer and all the infrastructure mm -hmm. that's needed because that's really important to make sure that we're providing that good service as well. Absolutely. Thank so you. anybody else have any any questions or anything of Ms. McKay? Okay, well, th thank you very much, everybody. Um, we do not have any, oh, I'd just like to say, first of all, thank you to all the directors for coming and presenting today. And we just want to say how happy we are that, um, that our CAO, uh, Risling is, um, is with us and seems to be, um, working well with the group. And we're happy that, um, uh, Councillor Bennett and Councillor King and I will be happy to work with all of you. Uh, for the next um, four years, and uh, we're obviously happy to have two new members of council joining us on November the 1st, so thank you, um, CAO Risling. We appreciate um, that you had to jump into this very quickly, and um, and we were just worried that you were going to say, oh my goodness, this is way too much for me to take <laughs> on, but he seems to be already getting enough rest, and so we're happy to have you with us all. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor McCordo. Uh, well, I appreciate uh, Council selecting me and, and being part of this family. I can say that the this is the first quarter that I've been part of as far as the updates, and I'm certainly encouraged by uh, the efforts of staff and uh, the, and also appreciative of the challenges that they're facing, especially on the labor front and being able to still fulfill um, the requirements of and the meeting. Basically, I think most of the expectations of not only our citizens, but also our, our visitors in the, the tourist season. It certainly has been, a, I think, it's um, challenging considering uh, you know, just the, the ability to uh, obtain labor. And it's going to be some challenges that we're going to have to look into the future and become a little bit more creative to meet those expectations. But I think the group is up to it and already made some, some changes and done some things a little bit on the creative side. As you heard a little bit earlier on the planning side, uh, been able to 
to come some work from a, another municipality to assist on that front. So uh, it's really, really encouraging, and I, I I appreciate the opportunity to become part of this 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 family and uh, part of the community. So thank you very much, and uh, certainly want to say uh, I appreciate working with Councillor Rose and Councillor Harvey. Well, it has been short. I appreciate their dedication to public service. It's not a job that I'd want to have, and I, I know it's really really <laughs> tough. And um, definitely, your service uh, from my perspective has been outstanding, and I wish both of you all the best. And, for the, the rest, I'm looking forward to another good four years, and hopefully, over the next four years, we'll be able to deliver on uh, uh, the expectations that uh, you set uh, you set for us, and uh, hopefully, even exceed them. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody, for um, for attending and presenting all your reports. And I'm going to turn this over to Councillor King now. Are you not terminating? Terminate. <laughs> <laughs> He's moving the termination of the meeting. Is there a seconder? Councillor Rhodes, all in favor. Thank you very much, everybody.